Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com with another episode of Your Questions Answered. The question that we get quite frequently is, how long does a cardiac arrest patient stay in intensive care? Cardiac arrest patients in intensive care are frequent occurrence. After all, a cardiac arrest is one of the most serious conditions leading to critical illness and admission to intensive care. There are a couple of distinctions in a cardiac arrest that you must know. Generally, there are two scenarios that may lead to admission into intensive care after a cardiac arrest. Number one, the witnessed cardiac arrest in a relatively controlled environment where an ambulance or doctors and nurses were called and showed up immediately, like in somebody's home or in a hospital, and CPR, which is cardiopulmonary resuscitation, was commenced immediately, even if, by, if commenced by a family member or by a bystander. And the other cardiac arrest situation is the unwitnessed arrest, such as an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest in a more or less uncontrolled environment in a shopping center, car park, etc., with professional help not immediately available, and a relatively long lag time in paramedics showing up at the cardiac arrest scene and with CPR not commenced immediately. The first scenario might deliver the better outcomes and also might shorten the stay in intensive care, However, it also depends on what led to the cardiac arrest in the first place. Contributing factors may be heart disease, previous heart attack, irregular heart rhythms and cardiomyopathy to name a few. The witnessed or out of hospital arrest often goes hand in hand with a relatively long period of professional help not being available and is usually a bad situation to be in and the survival rate in those situations is usually lower compared to a cardiac arrest in a more controlled environment. Both situations, however, can lead to a relatively long stay in intensive care. Again, the length of stay also depends on other factors such as other comorbidities of a patient and the two most important questions after a cardiac arrest are how much damage has been done to the heart and was there more than three minutes without oxygen to the brain due to a delay in commencing CPR. If a lot of damage has been done to the heart, Further treatments such as stimulating medication for the heart, an angiogram or an angioplasty, bypass graft surgery, intraortic balloon pump and or ECMO therapy might be other therapies that may be effective. However, if the brain has had no or insufficient oxygen for more than three minutes, irreversible brain damage may have been done and it often changes dynamics quite dramatically. The diagnosis of irreversible brain damage can usually be confirmed in a CT of the brain, in an EEG and also through assessment of a neurologist. But the ultimate test is usually if a patient after cardiac arrest is showing any signs of awakening, purposeful movements and is generally waking up after initial sedation has been discontinued. If all that fails, then a prolongation of treatment may not be in the best interest of a patient. However, it is something that obviously needs to be assessed and confirmed and then discussed with the patient's families of what might be the best course of action. So how long does then a patient after cardiac arrest stay in intensive care? The answer of course is that it depends. And it depends on how much damage has been done to the heart and what further treatment might be effective. If bypass surgery or open heart surgery was effective, a few days in intensive care might be sufficient. But if complications occur, sometimes a few weeks might be necessary as well. In case your loved one requires an intraortic balloon pump or ECMO, you might plan for up to a few weeks in intensive care. If the situation is more difficult and brain damage due to the la lack of oxygen has been confirmed, the stay in intensive care may be a relatively short one, but again it depends. It depends on how much time the intensive care team requires to confirm the diagnosis. However, it could well be that even if there is brain damage, that there are still chances of recovery which may need time. Generally speaking, in both scenarios, often a ventilation tube is necessary and if there are difficulties in weaning your critically ill loved one off the ventilator, again, the stay in intensive care might be a longer stay. In both cases, it's very important that you and your family are consulted and informed about the treatment options and the outlook. So I hope that this gives you more insight and if you have a question that you want to have answered, please send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com. 
And for more information and for more in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care, sign up for our free membership and you get your free instant impact report. In this free instant impact report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In this free report, you'll also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability. You get five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to control power influence in your situation. You will get behind the scenes insight so that you understand what's really happening. And you'll learn how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. And it's not what you think. So thank you for watching this week's Your Questions Answered episode. And I hope you enjoyed it. This is Patrick Hutzel from Intensive Care Hotline. And I'll see you again next week with another update.